says U.S. continues its turn away from gasoline to electric vehicles, many EV drivers are questioning the reliability of the charging network. Kentucky is the latest state to use federal funding to expand electric vehicle charging stations. David Schechter shows us the rollout has been far slower than anticipated. But news this week of a major automaker cutting its production of electric vehicles, along with the ongoing frustration of EV owners whose cars struggle in the cold, are the latest signals of a slowdown in the race toward an electric future. I am David Tracy. I run uh, the Autopian. It's a car enthusiast website. I own two electric vehicles. Um, one of them is a first generation Nissan Leaf. It's the first model year um, that I bought for a thousand dollars after rebate. So it was dirt cheap. And uh, the other one is a BMW i3, though it technically has a gasoline range extender built in. So it's an EV with range extender, kind of cheating. The Nissan Leaf that I bought for $1,000, it has a range of about 25 miles because um, this was a really early electric car. So I kind of knew that, you know, trying to drive a car with 25 miles of range could lead me uh, to some, some peril. Realizing that, um, I decided to take a trip up a mountain. And, um, you know, it requires more energy to go up a mountain than to go flat. And so you have to account for that. So I was going up this mountain and I realized, okay, 25 miles is actually going to be more like 18. So I ran out of juice early and I got to a, an electro, electrify America charging station. This is one of the brands that, um, that, you know, builds the charging stations around the country. And they're known for having some, you know, there's still some challenges associated with running those charging stations. You know, I, I got there and I found that three of the stations uh, were not operating. It happened. It finally happened. I am stranded. I was able to find a charger uh, nearby, but it was a slower one. And so, you know, it took some amount of time. It took, I think I probably waited it, you know, just under an hour to, to get a, the juice I needed to get home. So Leaf has 20 miles of range. No worries, because I have one charger. I have two chargers and I have three chargers. But guess what? Zero of them work. Zero. None of them work. I realize it's not profound to say that Electrify America is terrible, but I mean, how can it be this bad all the time? This is, this is awful. I wasn't really concerned because I live in the LA area where the infrastructure is not that bad. Like it's, it's actually, it's actually pretty decent. I mean, relative to the rest of the country. I'm not sure exactly how many miles I had left, probably three or four miles. So I knew, okay, I got to figure something out here in the three or four mile radius. And I wasn't, because it was early in my EV ownership, I wasn't really in tune with these apps that you can use to find charging stations. I think whether you decide you want an EV depends on your lifestyle. Some of the, the advantages of owning an EV, if you, if you live in a place where gas costs are high, it's great to not have to to pay, you know, $5 a gallon or even $3 a gallon. No, nobody likes paying for gas, so that's great. Maintenance is also much easier. I haven't done anything pretty much to my electric car. You can't charge at home. I'd say I understand if uh, if you're not ready for it. Some of the downsides, of course, the infrastructure uh, isn't perfect. And, and especially if you don't own a Tesla, there is some planning that you're gonna have to factor into any trip. If you wanna buy a new one, even with rebates, they're a little bit you know, a little bit pricier, but they're basically getting there in terms of cost parity. The government has been um, challenging automakers with uh, CO2 standards forever, for a long time. The push for EVs is something that, there have been gradual changes made to that to make it so that, uh, so that automakers can hit the targets. Like um, recently, there was a bit of a, a sort of a pullback on some of those requirements. I think as long as there is, is, are provisions that allow for hybrids, I think we're good. I think if we were to say all EVs by 2030, I mean, it would not go well. Uh, it, you know, in certain parts of the country, you know, people with certain lifestyles would, you know, they, they, it wouldn't be great for them. I think it's safe to say. Not everyone's ready for, to go fully electric, and everybody knows that. Um, but offering hybrids, I think, is where we're going to go in the near term.
and uh, they're going to be it's going to be a combination of fully electric cars for people um, and for many people that's a great solution and it's going to be hybrids and I think between those two it's going to eventually converge to electric but you'll have hybrids in the interim as the infrastructure builds up.